was either a Monday or Tuesday night, and she called me, and I answered about, oh, getting the jury. She said that she would come to my house that night. I'm like, no, I'm at work. I'll call you this weekend to, you know, meet up. It's not even the weekend yet. And she calls. I don't even get the call. It's, actually, I didn't even get the call, but I got a voicemail. You have that recording, right? It's the voicemail. OK. Can we hear that voicemail? So, this Amy. Um, it's the end of the week now, girl, and you still haven't called me about my jury. Give me my jury. And you can go on your merry go away. But if I don't hear from you by today, um, yes, I will be pulling up to your house. If I don't hear from you today, I will be at your house every day. Call me back. You can block me all you want after you give me my Okay? All right, have a good one. Now, Ms. Norton Bolden, I was with you, like, in the first seven seconds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you, you kind of just... But it's frustration. Yeah, it was You said it with a sweet tone, though. But let, let me tell you, I, I have caught her so many times. And that phone call she talked about on Monday, she didn't even let me talk. She just hung up on me abruptly, talking about, I'll let you know by the end of this week. Like, You're and she, a just lying. Hung, she just hung up in my face. That's when I left the voicemail like that. Because I called you and you hung up in my face. Bro, just give me my jersey. So, where, so where were you when she sent the video of her tossing the At jersey? a baby shower in Palmdale. So you were out of town? Yes. When did you get back to town? The next morning. And you looked in the bushes? And I only had a box, only the top of the box. Mind you, I live in an apartment building with over 200 people in my apartment building. People play in that grass all the time. Dogs, kids, adults, like, Behind everybody. Bush. Got you. Like, She's lying. She got that damn jury. I don't even believe she threw it. You believe she has the jury? I do believe she has the jury. Because she said she got it priced, so did you get the jury and then get it priced to get the estimated value? Or are you saying you got it priced beforehand, but you trusted me, even though you told me that you no, thought I was weird and you never liked me like that? I'm, it's just confusing. Thank you. We're going to excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. This courtroom is now in recess. Well, before we begin our deliberations, I want it known that you two are not my friends, but we're cool. Oh, we're cool. cool. <laughs> we're cool. Oh. We're cool. Right. Anyway, the defendant was entrusted with her property. Throwing it in the bushes of a large apartment complex with the top flying off is not even the most minimal amount of care required for this type of bailment. So the defendant's reckless, negligent behavior certainly entitles the plaintiff to some compensation. Yeah, I, I agree. Do we have any independent evidence of the value of the jewelry? We don't. She did testify that she paid to have it cleaned, and she was willing to pay to have it repaired. Well, see the picture in the backdrop? I know it's not the same thing. These are sort of like door knockers. Huh. You see the earrings in the backdrop? That, that are priced at four seventy. Four hundred seventy dollars. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good start. I mean, I, they kind of look the same. But my concern is that this is a significant amount of money, twenty six hundred dollars, for even a nice pair of earrings and bracelet. It felt to me, in listening to the testimony, like twenty six hundred dollars takes into account the sentimental value. Yes. And you know what, what troubles me here? I, I think the defendant's behavior was really outrageous and sending her a video of her throwing it in such a, a callous and cavalier way. Does this rise to the level of extreme and outrageous conduct? It was, it was sure petty conduct, tossing it in the bush. I, it's, it's a close call. I feel like giving her $2,600 feels to me like giving her more than simply the value of the jewelry. Okay. Right. And acknowledging that this was something where she suffered more damages than simply the provable cost of the jewelry. And so the $2,600 estimate for the jewelry takes into account the, the, the emotional sentimental of, and, and emotional attachment to the jewelry yes. and the distress she suffered at losing her grandmother's jewelry, but not necessarily an intentional infliction of emotional distress claim against the defendant. Okay. Okay. Great. I, I think we, we have, have a verdict. verdict.